Harry and Meghan join the rest of the royal family today, presenting a united front for the procession of the late Queen's coffin. Princes William and Harry walk side by side behind the coffin as it left Buckingham Palace. The family entered Westminster Hall together. Oprah Winfrey has suggested that the late Queen's death provides an opportunity for peacemaking. Is she right, or is this just a temporary truce to get through a week that should all be about, of course, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II? Well, of course, the big spanner in the works is looming for the royal family, something I know personally they're very, very concerned about, is Harry's apparently explosive tell-all memoir, which has been written and is ready to roll off the presses. Joining me now to discuss this, Sun columnist Tony Parsons, talk to me contributor Esther Cracky, Laura Megan supporter Paula Roan Adrian, and best-selling author Douglas Murray is in New York. Let me start with you, Douglas. Welcome to the show. Um, I read a column from the New York Post that really hit a nerve this week about that Harry should pulp this book, that now we've had this dramatic event, we've lost the Queen, his father is now King, and he made a statement saying, it's time to honour my father, King Charles III. How is that compatible with a tell-all book, which will be presumably, as most of his outpourings have been about his father, very critical of the King? Uh, yes, I, I think they're not at all compatible. And I think this must in some ways be a very lonely time uh, for Harry. Uh, by all accounts, on the day of uh, the, the late Queen's death, he was having to arrange his own travel arrangements and was being reminded of the fact that had he been part of the family still, he'd have been uh, you know, looked after by them, but he had to sort of go his own way because he said he'd go his own way. Uh, now he's seeing some of the costs of that. One of the costs of it, I'm sure, is a, a certain coldness for members of the family. Uh, how could you not um, guard what you say uh, when a family member has said so many things uh, about the family mm. and it's to say more? Um, how could he expect, he or what expect to be treated entirely warmly? And they've already um, said so many untrue things about mm. the royal family, mm. so many hurtful things and are promising more to come. Of course he should pull the memoir. It's a decent thing to do. He's made plenty of money from other deals, from Netflix, from Spotify and others. He doesn't need to release the memoir now. I, I completely concur with that. But, Paula, you think he should be able to pub publish the book? Of course he should. Of course he Why? should. Why? He should have the opportunity to have his say. He hasn't stopped yapping for two years. Literally. He and his wife, barely a week goes by without him sticking the knife into the royal family and the monarchy. So what do you mean he's got to have his say? He doesn't stop having his say. And we could say problem. We could say that about the press too, couldn't we? We could say that about the millions of stories that have been um, reported in the press about Twitter going wild. We know that reports have been done, haven't we? Well, when you have two members of the royal family constantly publicly attacking the royal family and the monarchy, of course the media are going to respond. People say to me, when are you going to stop criticising Meghan Markle and Prince Harry? When they stop attacking the royal family, well, is my see, answer. Just even in the tone, it's very aggressive. They're attacking the royal family. They are. Is that They've the case, or is it the races? case that they are telling their truth, that they are finally what getting an opportunity, the is, finally getting yeah, an opportunity Paula, to sorry, have their Paula, say. There is no such thing as someone's individual truth. When Meghan Markle talks about my truth, it doesn't exist. There is the truth, which are facts, and there's everything else. And the problem you with don't that, have your own version the problem of the truth. With, the problem with that argument is is that is exactly why they needed to have this book, because you will well, deny, so they you will their deny their truth. And you can't you continue to do that. What, it, you what, have why to be should able they to... be allowed to tell blatant lies about the royal family? Well, because they don't believe they are telling blatant lies. Well, let me give lies. an example. And we let don't me give an know. Example. Meghan Markle told Oprah Winfrey that their son, Archie, was not going to be a prince because of his skin colour. That's what she inferred in, in that answer. Ah, right? So now, you're very careful there, Piers. As you may now know, you're very careful the, there, Piers. That the, is what she inferred. Well, it's it was pretty not obvious. what she said, which it is, is how you said. started this conversation. It is what she said. And this is why we need to be careful because this is such an emotive topic during this, of course, exceptionally sad period of time where we know that they are a grieving family and we know that they have done their absolute yeah, best to about, show a yeah, united on, front. I'm not talking about now. I'm talking about when this book. Lands. Tony, I think it's, it's going to be like an unexploded bomb when this thing goes off. It's going to be something which has been ticking away, ticking away. I know the palace are incredibly concerned, much more so now Charles is king, because they also fear Harry might have a go at Camilla, 
who's now the Queen Consort yes. of this yeah. country, yeah. and try and settle scores going back to his parents' marriage uh, breaking up. I do think there's the law of diminishing returns. I don't think anything will ever have the impact of that Oprah in interview. Mm. I don't think anything Are will you, ever I'm drop not sure like that. Know, a because, you know, book from Harry? Because, you know, it was so unchallenged. You know, she, she looked, Oprah looked like the worst journalist in the world. Ah. Everything that was well, put out there, that journalist. was put out there, was un completely unchallenged. Mm. And, um, and I, and I think people were shocked and hurt in this country because I, I went, I was among the crowds at Windsor the day they got married, and there was a genuine, real love and there was no racism and so, whatsoever and, towards Meghan Markle. You know, and, that and the idea that from the, from the press in this country, is, none, nada, zero. Is, I know what I read. I know what I wrote. For because example, you don't know what this country what embraced. For embraced her. the whole thing. You don't know what existed for her and what she I do is know that saying her truth and what has Harry to be is saying. Because I noticed that we're focusing on Meghan. But well, Harry's no, she's, part of this as well. Yeah. I think and what you are hit. concerned okay. about right. with this book is the truth no, I'm not. Now. I'm concerned about that is their what you're version concerned about. of the truth, which is often completely untrue. Esther, here's my problem with it. Yeah. If all they did was tell the truth, that's one thing. But 17 different statements from the Oprah interview alone were proven to be untrue. We still don't know who this supposed royal was who raised concern which, which I have about a big their child's skin colour. Because cut. I do wish that they actually said who it was because I thought it was very immature for them to not Smear do it. Smear I don't have a problem with Harry coming out with the book, actually. He's, he's led quite an extraordinary really? life. No, 10 years in the army, you know, I don't have a problem with that. Uh, but I think... I, like, I suspect, with, with good reason, that it's not going to be tasteful, that it could be an attack on but Camilla. But surely he understands or now sort that... Of the fictional the, truth he's, behind he's, Meghan's he's you know, disastrous the last experience. Grade. Well, let me burning ask... I'll tell you what... Thing. Well, I, I, well, well let, me, let, me, let me ask... Let me ask Douglas Murray. Uh, Douglas, there's a kind of perception here that they're doing all this because it plays really well for them in America. But the New York Post cleared its front page for a very mocking image of, of Meghan Markle recently, looking like a, a, a toddler in a tiara throwing tantrum after tantrum. What is the mood, you think, amongst the majority of Americans about what they've been doing? Well, th there's a deep scepticism about it. Um, some support, uh, but also, I think, just a lot of embarrassment about it. Uh, a sort of embarrassment about the fact that you know, Markle joined the royal family. There was, as, as, as several people already said, incredible goodwill towards her and towards the EU. I never saw anything in the British press that was even remote critical of Meghan herself. On the day itself of the wedding, it would have been a happier day. The sight of Prince Charles walking his new daughter-in-law up the aisle, um, uh, escorting her mother in St George's Chapel. It was such a sign, as it was the, the photographs of the Queen meeting her first great-grandchild of, of, of yeah. Meghan and Harry. These were such healing things, and there was so much goodwill around the world. And I'm afraid that Meghan and Harry have through their own actions, just thrown that goodwill away on both sides of the Atlantic. And the trouble started, actually, the trouble started when the whole fury over her father blew up uh, and her yeah. decision to then completely disown him. And from that moment on, you can see the trajectory of the criticism in the media building and building, because they then embarked on this huge victimhood tour where they kept being rankly hypocritical about things like, you know, preaching about carbon footprint and catching private jets all the time and so on, but also constantly whining, playing the victim, the complete antithesis of what the Queen, for example, uh, stood for. Uh, Douglas, thank you for joining thank me. You. As always, spot on. Thank you uh, to my panel.